What's up everyone? It's Marion with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten and I'm here today with a little short conversational piece about gentlemen, what men, what women want the most is to feel safe and uh, that's what this topic is about. I know that um, against everything that everybody's saying out there, women want men to make six figures, they want men to have a six pack and they want men to do this, that and the third, but really what we want is for you guys to make us feel safe in every way imaginable when we're under your cover and your leadership. So that's what it's about. If you haven't done so already, please click and subscribe on my YouTube channel for more informative real talk videos. Okay, I'll jump right into it. I brought that up because I think that's, um, and I'm looking at my notes because I like to stay in order, but I'm looking at it because I feel like I think that's a big part of what's being missed. Yes, truly, we want our men to be uh, responsible uh, financially and all those things and but I don't think every woman requires her man to make six figures um, so but what she will need is to feel safe um, with him she she needs to feel safe and what I mean by feeling safe uh, for a woman to feel safe she has to have um, good communication between her and her partner she has to have I believe there should be full disclosure from her part and his part so each person will know what exactly what their goals are and I, I think that when you enter into a romantic relationship that there should be goals placed out there uh, and what I mean by that both parties should should tell each other what they really want and what they expect from the relationship and then if they don't really match then that's when they need to say hey you know i think we're in two different places in our lives there is no um ill will towards you a, a no looking down on you it just means that we're in two places different places in our lives and i just think that i should part ways i think that when communication is open we're able to not waste so much time and and, and develop so many harsh um feelings towards each other we should just be honest about it and say hey we really don't fit uh, so that's why it's really good to have open communication and for us to slow down long enough to not be in lust and to really get to know the person. So that's going to take us to just kind of back up and just slow down. You know, I know sometimes that's that's hard because as human beings, we're very physical, but um, the the physical parts of us can get us in trouble if we move uh, ahead too quickly and tie ourselves to someone that maybe just don't fit what we need. Uh, so that's what this is. Um, this is aiming towards us slowing down long enough to make a conscious decision uh, to pick the correct mate. But gentlemen, I think you guys, because a lot of I talk to you know men all the time. I have guy friends, I have brothers, I have uncles, I have cousins, and um, and what I hear is that you know I believe that men too want great relationships. And, uh, and a lot of times you guys have been misled to think that every woman out there is looking for your money or your success or fame or whatever that may be. But most of the time, a woman just really wants a good man that she can rely on, that can be loyal to her, that can treat her well, that can add to her life as well as she adds to his life. And so that she can feel safe in that. And that comes with open communication. How we build trust is that we communicate. That's how we get to know each other. That's how we get to know our likes and dislikes and, and, and where we feel safe in that. And, and that's gonna take a lot of questions answered. That's gonna take a lot of patience. And it's gonna, you're gonna have to work through um, growing pains. New relationships require that we learn each other and we're going to have some bumps in the road. It does not mean that person is not for you. It just means that you just need a little bit more time to get to know that person. Now, what I mean by bumps in the road is that you're not going to be arguing with this person every single day, uh, but it's not going to be um, perfect. It's not going to be like, I mean, because when I see a perfect relationship, I see fake because nobody's perfect. There's no perfect person in the world. And people can pretend with you and make you believe that, oh, all is all, you know, everything is all well, but they may be pretending with you. They may not even like you. They may have another goal outside of a romantic relationship. So be very leery of relationships that seem too perfect because sometimes they're not. They're, there's just a lot of games being played. In a real relationship, you're going to see the good, bad, the ugly, the indifferent. And then you have to decide if this person is worth the fight. 
and then that person has to decide if you're worth the fight and then when y'all realize that you really do care for each other and you feel like that this person is worth the fight then you stick it out and you and you just make that relationship work but take your time don't go too quickly because you can miss something detrimental to the success of the relationship so gentlemen i just wanted to point that out because i think that um, most women are given a bad name about that if you don't make six, six figures or if you don't take care of her that she's really not going to give you the time of day that's the falsehood most women we work hard already we earn our own wages we take care of ourselves we're really just looking for somebody to compliment what we already bring to the table so I wanted to make sure I stressed uh, that part now I want to go into the part of what what makes a woman feel safe as well is you recognizing uh the things in your life that you may need to change because we all have those things that we need to work on and we need to change about ourselves because we're all uh we're in a process of in some way of another healing because nobody that's entered into this world hasn't been affected by this world in some way shape form or fashion i understand men you guys have been hurt just like women have been hurt but you know you may have been hurt in a relationship you may have been hurt as a child but we've all been through things so it we all need to learn we're in our lives we are our own poison and we need to deal with that poison so that we don't injure someone else or re-injure someone else we need to be healthy and whole when we engage in relationships so that's what i mean please excuse the traffic i'm sitting outside where i live and i wanted to get this video in before i go um in the house because there's no telling what is going on in there so i wanted to just get this out uh because i felt it was important i mean i've heard a couple men and i've talked to a couple of men and they they feel as though they're getting slighted by women that are materialistic and they just want a whole bunch of money and they don't care about the man's feeling that's so far from the truth i mean you can kind of tell gentlemen the women that are like that they're at every i don't want to talk about women but you know the difference between a good woman somebody that that's gonna bring you a lot of joy and happiness and peace and, and then you know the party person and, and i'm not talking about the party person because that's her prog uh, that's her prerogative to what she wants to do if she wants to be a part of person that's on her i can't judge anyone but every woman is not like that some of us work really hard and we want to add to the relationship we don't want to just take away so i wanted to point that out but what i was getting to is about your own poison is that i don't care how much you you believe that you have achieved in your lifetime i don't care how much education you have how much money you've earned how much you've saved how many um people you've helped whatever the case may be there's still something that you may need to work on and there's a scripture this is for my christian brothers and sisters but there's a scripture that i read a lot and it keeps me grounded and it keeps me humble but it's philippians 3 13 i'm sure you guys know it 3 13 through 14 and it says brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before i press toward the mark of the for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus this really really helps me because not only does it tell me to forget my past the past things in life the past things could be all the hurts the pains the disappointments the traumas anything that i've experienced in my past i have to put that away and tuck it away so i don't see things from that perspective i want to have a clear perspective so i can treat people accordingly not by what i knew in my past or what i've experienced in my past so this is a very powerful um scripture and so we want to put those things behind and we want to reach forward to what's in front of us so then you have something grand in front of you whether it's a new job opportunity whether it's a new relationship whether it's a move out of state whatever that is that god is putting in front of you there's a new opportunity there that could change your life forever you you won't ever know that if you don't press forward to what's in front of you so this is a very powerful scripture and then it also goes you press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus so there's a higher calling for each and every one of us there's a purpose that we all have and so we have to make sure that we're living out our purpose we have to make sure we're honoring each other by being kind to each other by learning how to speak to each other by learning how to bring our our baskets full and I, I i made other videos because i like to explain it in that analogy is that uh when you're entering into a new relationship you want to make sure your basket is full full of gifts and attributes that you can give to your partner 
to your mate. And then that person needs to make sure their basket is full, full of gifts and attributes willing to give to their partner. And then we're both coming with our baskets full, which means we're coming in adding to the relationship. There's no deficit. And we take that and we combine it together and nobody feels slighted. Everybody feels full and content because everybody's adding something of value to that relationship. And mind you, I didn't say anything about material things. What I mean by gifts and abilities, you may have a gift of communication. You may have a gift of understanding. You may have a gift of discernment. You may have a spiritual gift, whatever that may be. And then your partner may have a gift of uh, balance, um, bringing everything uh, equally to the relationship or organization skills or good listening techniques. And those gifts are the things that I'm talking about. Not so much as financial. Of course, we need our finances together because we have to be able to take care of ourselves. So, but I'm talking about the internal stuff, the healing parts. You're bringing a clean um, slate with you. That means everything that happened in your past, you're leaving it there, just like the scripture is saying. And so you're bringing something fresh to the relationship. And then that person is bringing something fresh. Those are our gifts. We wanna come with full gifts, not empty. Because if you come in with an empty basket, you're gonna the other person that brought the full basket, before you know it, their basket is gonna be empty as well. And then you're both gonna be empty and that relationship is not gonna flourish. That's just the bottom line. So we wanna make sure we're healthy and we're whole, we're doing our work, that either we've done our work or we're in our work. And we wanna make sure we've resolved any issues that could possibly stunt the growth of what could be a great relationship so i wanted to put that out there because i think a lot of times we believe just because we've achieved uh financial success or educational uh, success or just accolades that we may have collected over our our lifespan that we're with we're good and we're through but even paul being the great person that he was he understood that he hadn't arrived yet and we need to realize we haven't arrived yet and we still have more work to do we're still a work in progress but i wanted to make sure i said what a woman wants the most is to feel secure in her relationship with you even at the beginning she wants to know where she stands she wants to know everything that's going to be important to her security and her safety and and you're responsible for that man because if you don't make a woman feel sec secure mentally physically emotionally um then she's not going to open up to you and she's not going to feel like she's comfortable enough to connect to you really and then that's when you kind of go through the motions you're just kind of seeing each other you're dating but nobody's really getting connected because there's something about you that don't feel safe and that comes with open communication i don't care how big bad bold or indifferent that things that we go through in our lives are i believe that when you put those things out on the table it's the other person's responsibility to either accept it or not if they don't accept it that's not your person it doesn't mean that you're not a good person it doesn't mean that you don't deserve love because i believe there's somebody for everybody and we all deserve to be loved but it just means that you need to be more clear and because you want the right person on your side you want somebody that's going to stick by your side regardless of what they tell you but don't keep secrets lay everything out on the table and the other person lay everything out on the table and then you can determine if you guys can make that relationship work um i know it's one thing that i'm being tested on and i'm learning from and i just want to add a little bit about my testimony but i realized that because of some of the things i went through in my youth and some of the things that i saw my mother go through god rest her soul uh with my father a lot of people know my story. I, I, I'm the authorist of uh, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters. A lot of people know my story already, but because of some of the things I saw my mother going through that my dad put her through, it gave me really low tolerance for accepting men unconditionally because I seen all the hell my mother went through and I just felt like no human being should have had to go through the pain and the trauma that she experienced. And then we experienced as well because we were in the house. So that made me very short fused on loving people unconditionally. But God is bringing me back because he wants me to learn something to a certain uh, in a certain situation. He wants me to love not only myself unconditionally and understanding 
that I'm somebody special and regardless of what I've been through in my past, I deserve nothing but his best. So therefore I need to l learn how to love myself unconditionally. If people don't know me, I'm very hard on myself. If I make a mistake, I'm going inside myself. I'm, I'm, I'm going to counseling, I'm reading books, I'm praying, I'm fasting. God doesn't want me to condemn myself like that. That's what I'm learning. He, he needs me to understand that I'm not perfect. I'm human and I'm fallible and I will make mistakes. And I need to love myself just as I am unconditionally. But not only is he teaching me how to love myself unconditionally, he's teaching me to how, how to love men unconditionally. So this last 60 days, I have been challenged by God to pray for the men in my life. And I've been praying adamantly for the last 60 days. And... I, that's what I'm being told to do and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be disciplined to the spirit and and, and it, it's been helping me with understanding uh, our men's plight. Um, so that's what I'm doing and, and, and he's teaching me how to love unconditionally and I'm not going to say it's not hard. It is hard. It's so hard. But I always have to remember, just like I said on that scripture, I have to remember that I have to put aside the past and press forward what to what's in front of me so i have to be able to do that so that i can have a clear uh healthy perspective towards men and not look at them like okay what's wrong with you uh now what are you going to do to me well how are you going to hurt me you know i don't want to have that type of perspective i want to look at everybody and give them a clean slate and love them unconditionally as best as i can and i start by loving myself unconditionally so that's what i'm learning that's what i'm going through i just wanted to share my testimony about how I feel like I can fit in trying to help encourage and empower the men of our the men in our communities and in our lives by saying that you know the one thing that a woman needs the most is to feel safe in a man's covering even when at the beginning of dating that's really really important you guys and um, there's something else I want to add well I guess I won't add it but I just wanted to mention that if you have daughters you want to make sure that you are making her feel safe as possible, that you wanna make sure you have a safe space for her to come to you anytime, that you wanna build her up and tell her how beautiful she is and how special she is, and you wanna example love in front of her, healthy, strong love, even for our boys, but really for the girls, because when they feel loved by their father, they're not gonna accept anything less than, and they're not gonna be, um, what do you call it, groomed by somebody that just wants to hurt them or use them, they're gonna be able to know, well, no, my dad, you know, he was way up here with me, you know, he treated me like his little princess. And so therefore, the, the man that comes up after him that wants to take her hand, if he's anything less than what her dad is, she gonna be like, uh-uh, he ain't the one. So then that's gonna protect our women and keep our women, you know, in this special place that we should always have been in. We should never be in, been tossed aside or, or hurt or disappointed in any kind of way. So I hope that makes sense, gentlemen. You have to really make sure you, you know how to treat women overall, including your daughters, because one day they're gonna grow up and be women, and then they're going to uh, receive either the best or the worst of man. So we want them to receive the best. That means you have to example the best behavior for your little girls so they can grow up and make better choices in men okay i hope that i made sense of this video i know i'm doing it really quickly because it's about to get dark and i need to go inside but i want you guys to know that there is nothing more special than a black man we absolutely love you guys and we need you to be leaders and to be vigilant in our communities we need you to be powerful um incredible men like you are we, we want you to know that we need you and in needing you we want you to know what we need from you we need to you to cover us to protect us the black woman is the least protected woman on the planet we are do this you can you can do the research you can do the statistics whatever you need to do but we need more covering from our men and it starts with you guys understanding what we really need. And it's way more than finances. Of course, we need finances. We need your financial help if we're gonna build something together. But more importantly, we need to make sure we're safe in every aspect. We need to make sure we're safe in uh, the things we know, the things we don't know, the things we really haven't learned yet about you. Protect us in all those areas so that can build a strong foundation 
uh, for a great successful relationship. So I guess I'm done. I got people all in my mix, <laughs> but I, I wanted to get this message all uh, across because it's, it's extremely important for us to build our communities and our relationships amongst each other. And for men to know that black women love black men. We just need to feel more protected. That's all. That's all we ask. Clarity, great communication, protection comes before anything else. So you guys, I want you to know that I absolutely love you. I adore you. We cannot live our lives without you. Remember to love God, love yourselves, and love everyone else after. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.